Hi, I'm Dustin with Overwork Logic. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can control this Philips Hue bulb using HTTPS in Crestron Simple Windows. The example code for this project is available at the link below. What I want to mention beforehand is that this project is not really the best way to control a Philips Hue bulb. If you go on Google and search for Philips Hue Crestron, there is an automation module that's probably really good. These guys write good software. There's also one on GitHub. I think I've played around with that before. The purpose of this video specifically is to show you how you can use one method to establish an HTTPS connection to this device, and you can possibly use it for other devices. The HTTPS module I'm using is created from a guy that actually used to work for me. He's released it into the public domain on GitHub. So you can follow it from this link here. I'll put this link below as well. And go to releases. And there you can download the zip file. Once we unzip the file, I'm going to take the USH, the USP, and the CLZ file and copy them into my project directory, which I've already done. And then you have to go options, reload device and symbol libraries from disk, or just reopen the project and it will show up under project modules as HTTPS utility. So this module, I've dragged it in here and I'm going to explain how we actually make the commands for the Philips Hue specifically. Just in simple windows, we're using the put command. We need a URL, a header, and content, which is going to define how we're controlling this device and which device we're actually sending the commands out to. In the HTTP video that I did where we were controlling a Roku player, we were actually generating the full HTTP post right out of plain text. Now in this module, the module itself fills in a lot of this information. We supply this information here and the module is actually generating the put, the HTTP 1.1. It puts the host in there. We've supplied the content type as the header. You can see above there, that's the header. And then our content, this on is true. You'll notice that content length, we don't supply that. That's something that the module calculates for us. And then it encrypts it and sends it to the Philips Hue device. The Philips Hue protocol is pretty straightforward. If you go to developers.meethue.com, you have to create an account, which is free. I signed up for one for myself. And under the getting started page, there's a couple steps. To make this work, you're also going to need to use the Philips Hue bridge. On the getting started page, https colon slash less discovery.meethue.com, it will search for the local Hue bridge. So mine is 192.168.1.42. And then it gives us a couple different things. So you can go to the bridge IP slash clip.html. And this is a handy little debug page that they've made. The first request that we can send out is slash API slash new developer. And that's a get request. And that comes back with unauthorized user as expected. The second thing we need to do is register a developer account on the bridge, and that's where we're going to need to press the button. So if we go slash API as the endpoint, and in the message body, we need to post this JSON information. So I'm just going to name this as Dustin Computer. And then you have to post it. So I'll just click post. And right here it comes back and says the link button is not pressed. So I got to go press the button, and then I'll issue that command again in just a second. So now that I've pressed the button, I'm going to post this again, and it will come back with a username. And this is what we're going to use in future commands to the device. First thing we want to do is get a list of lights, because I'm just going to turn on a specific one. So I'm going to copy this and put it just in another document here so I can reference it. Now I want to query what lights are available. So I'm going to go slash API slash this username slash lights. And this is going to be a get. And this comes back with a bunch of lights. Now the one that I care about is actually in my system, it's light number six. I set these up before with my phone and the Philips Hue app. So to control this light from here, the command is going to be slash lights slash six. So I just do get, this will return the data just from that specific light. To actually control it, we're going to add slash state and then in the message body we're going to put on is true 
and this will turn it on when we put, we need to do a put command. And it says success that it's gone on, and I see that it's gone on. If I do false, it turns off the light. So these are the commands that we're going to do in CrestGen. Now remember I said the automation module and other modules that are actually controlling Hue, those manage all of this. We had to do a bunch of background work just to get this registered and to get this ID and to figure out which light we're actually controlling. But the point of this is just to use the HTTPS as a mechanism to control the device. You might notice that this ID has actually changed. This was from a previous version. It matches the other video portions that I have already recorded. So I'm going to copy this slash API slash username slash lights slash six slash state into the serial send for the URL. I'm just adding HTTPS colon slash slash and then the IP address, which is 192.168.1.42 in my case. So all this other stuff here is from here. The header is this content type application slash JSON. And then the body, I didn't specify it here. The body is going to change. So we're using a serial IO and these are our digital pulses to turn on and off. So when we do on, we're going to send the body of on true. When we pulse off, we're going to send on is false. And this is our content. So these all feed into this HTTPS utility, the URL, the header, and the content. And it gets triggered by send put. I've got this as a logic wave pulse. And the way that I'm generating that, whenever this content changes, so it's from one of these presses, this string will change. We're watching this string. Whenever there's a change of this string, then we just send the send put logic wave pulse. So that lets us be able to just press on one of these two buttons and it will send a different command. It sends the URL, the header, and the content together. And that's basically all there is to it on the simple side. So if we load this, jump over to debugger. One thing I didn't do is use make string permanent. So the strings that we generate here, you're not going to see them in debugger. But if we do on, content string does change. We catch it as on equals true. The send put logic wave pulse goes high, and then it sends that command out. So this is the same thing that it said here, success, state equals true. And you can see that there. It also gives us the content length, which we don't really care about, but sometimes that's useful for managing HTTP requests. Like I mentioned before, this is a very simplistic demonstration. What I wanted to basically show was using this HTTPS so that we could generate an HTTPS command. This module is good for very basic HTTPS controls where we're sending a get, a post, a put, or a delete. Anything that's more advanced probably requires a more comprehensive program, and it makes more sense to handle that right in the simple sharp domain than to try to abstract it and pull it all out and track things in simple windows. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found this video useful. Any comments, please leave them below. I read them all. And please like the video if you found it useful and subscribe to the channel for notifications when we release new videos. Thanks and we'll see you in the next video.